Hey guys, it's Mr. Schmidt here, and in the last video of this unit and the last video for microeconomics, we're going to look at one last type of market failure, which is income inequality. So income inequality simply means that the distribution of income throughout a society isn't equal. And so what do we mean by that? Well, I think the best way to look at it is through how the government goes about measuring distribution of income. So what the government does, it divides all income earning families into five equal groups. Sometimes these are called quintiles from the prefix quin meaning five, uh, from poorest to richest. Each group therefore represents 20% of the population. If perfect equality exists, 20% of families should control 20% of the nation's income. 40% should control 40%, 60% should control 60% of the nation's income, and so on. Of course, that's perfect equality, which no nation has yet to achieve. But what the government does is they compare how far the actual distribution of income is from a perfect distribution. In other words, what if 80% of uh, the nation only controls 60% of the nation's income, right? Like how far away from the actual perfect distribution are we, right? How far are we away from perfect income equality, right? And then what policies could we put into place to try to make that more even if we feel like that's a goal we should be doing? And so that's the idea behind measuring income inequality, right? Divide it up into five groups, right? So we could we could show that here. One, two, three, four, five. So we got 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. And then so what we would do is again say, okay, you know, if I pick this 60% of the nation, they should be controlling 60% of the income. One way we can visually show that, uh, or how far away we are from that, I should say, is with something called the Lorenz curve. So the Lorenz, the Lorenz curve, sorry, is a model of income inequality that compares a line of perfect equality, i.e. 50% of income should be controlled by 15% of, of the population or families, to a Lorenz curve that measures what percent of income is actually controlled by what percent of families. And I think the best way to wrap your brain around that is for me to show it to you. So here it is, the Lorenz curve. So for the first thing you'll notice here is we have this line here of perfect equality, right? And so you can see that if I, you know, pick a point on the line here and I say, okay, here's 20% of families, and oh look, they control 20% of income. That's perfect equality. But I can see that the actual Lorenz curve, the 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 linear line is not the Lorenz curve, that's the perfect equality line. The Lorenz curve is actually where we actually are. And so you can see here uh, that 55% of income is controlled by 80% of families, right? So we're, we're a little away from perfect equality, right? We would expect that 80%, right, of, of uh, income is controlled by 80% of families. And so this gap here between the uh, Lorenz curve and the line of perfect equality is income inequality, right? That's the gap measures how much income inequality exists in this society. So the closer the curve is to the perfect equality line, the more equitable the distribution of income is in this particular society. And so government might put in policies in place such as a tax or some type of a subsidy to help families that are poor catch up to those who are richer and close the gap of income inequality. This is not a graph uh, as far as the AP exam goes that you would ever actually have to draw. You just need to know what it does and be able to recognize that on a graph they might give you. Lastly, if you're looking for a numerical way to express income inequality, we can do that with something called the Gini coefficient. So that's a statistical measurement of income distribution as a number between zero and one. If the number is zero, that means we have perfect income, equal income equality, meaning that we are on that linear line of perfect income equality on the Lorenz curve graph. But if the number is a one, that means we have perfect income inequality, where the smallest possible number of people control the vast majority of the wealth in that particular country. 
right? And so, you know, you can look this up and you can Google uh, different countries' Gini coefficients to see where country is, right? The closer we are to zero, the more income equality there is, the, the closer the number is to one, the more inequality there is in that society. This is not something you will need to calculate. Uh, you can look up how to calculate it, actually. You need to know how to do areas under curves because it involves like this area and then this area of the graph and then doing some division there. But we don't need to be able to do that. We just need to be able to recognize what the number means as far as it relates to income inequality. So that's all for this video on income inequality. Until next time, have a great day.